I told myself there is no such thing as creative block. Simply start painting or drawing. And yet I'm sitting here with no idea what to paint. That was before I bought the book, The Creative Act by Rick Rubin. And after reading two chapters on tuning in and choosing, I have some idea of where to start, I think. To let you in on how I feel about choosing what to paint is I'm feeling lost. When I go to the library, or the well of what I want to create, I come up with nothing, not too many ideas. And I think that's also because how I'm looking at inspiration. Now, before I got this book, The Creative Act, which is about two days ago, I would think about how I'm looking at inspiration and taking in ideas. It's still difficult to translate those. Even when I have paintings I've done, and I look at them and I think, oh, well, that was a good idea that I express and I created. At the same time, I don't want my paintings to be trend-like paintings. What I mean by that is, I don't want to take an idea simply because it sounds cool in that moment and it may seem cool to the masses. Therefore, over time, the idea of this painting may not last long. The longevity of this painting, in a way. The aim is for the paintings to be timeless in a sense. It's very similar to a Kendrick Lamar album or a Kendrick Lamar song. The songs that he makes aren't these trendy kind of song. It's not a trend that he's following when he makes a song. At the same time, when he puts together these projects and these albums, you can listen to that same song five, 10 years down the road and it can still have a very strong meaning to it. That's the aim here I'm going for. Now, the first two chapters that I read in this book were choosing and tuning in. And the way that I'm reading this book is I was watching a interview with Rick Rubin and he was talking about a way to read the book. And the idea is to simply flip over the book to a random page and read that page. It does not matter where you start because that was his intention for the book, to kind of pick great ideas from, to kind of pick up anywhere and learn something. And the reason why I went with those two is because I was reading the, reading the index there, I think it's what it's called, the index. Yeah, and I was reading the beginning there of different names of the chapters and ones that stood out to me ones that related to me in this moment of figuring out what to paint and how do I take my ideas and turn them into something physical. And those were the main two. Now choosing. One thing that stood out to me in this book is, is when he says, the instinctual tug tends to be the purest, whereas the second, more reasoned thought, tends to be processed and distorted through analysis. Now the reason why that sticks with me is because I tend to think a lot about what I want to paint. And I think about a lot about the technical side of it, the meaning behind it and i think about it in sort of a puzzle when i want people to look at my painting i want them to have many ideas at the same time this creates this sort of analytical process for me to where i'm overthinking this idea that i have and in this part he talks about more of a feeling an instinct that first instinct that knee-jerk reaction he says in the book and that's something that i'm learning now after two days after reading the book is I'm consciously thinking about that first instinct that I have with certain things around me. Now, I did read more chapters after this, which has also helped me even more about thinking about what to paint and how I'm keeping my mind open to ideas and taking in things. That's a different topic of stuff right there. And I think even after reading that little bit part of the book right there, I'm more conscious of what I'm taking in and how I'm using that first instinct, that first thought and response I have to things in a way that could be beneficial, especially when it comes to a painting. What painting am I gonna choose? Do I wanna paint this or do I wanna paint that? That's the main point of that chapter is choosing what to paint. Which one do I have that knee jerk reaction to? Because there's so many ideas. And as artists, we have so much freedom. At the same time, I don't wanna overthink a painting because then it can feel forced. Have you ever seen a painting or something else and you could tell that this person forced this idea into it, it wasn't as natural. That's how I don't want my paint to look because I can see it. Now, somebody else might not be able to see it. At the same time, I can see that something is forced and it's not as natural. It's like as if two music artists were to make a song together and you could tell they wanted to put every idea, every thought and every skill into the song and it simply comes out not harmonizing. It's not well meshed together and it's forced. Yes, we have a lot of skills in certain things. We have a lot of ideas. At the same time, every idea does not need to be 
shown and displayed inside that work of art. The aim is to feel this. I'm starting to feel what I choose to paint. Rather than overanalyzing it, think about all the ideas and the different thoughts and small details into it, which makes it unnatural and it just comes out forced. Now let me talk about tuning in. If you haven't noticed, I'm simply sharing my thoughts on some of the things I've been thinking about lately when it comes to painting and choosing what to paint. Now tuning in, tuning in is another part that he talks about in this book. Tuning in for me is being aware of the things that are around us. And these are some of the things I'm currently learning from this book. Now he talks about in another chapter about creativity being an outside source. A lot of times we think about creativity in the sense of it's mainly coming from within. And yet there are small pieces of that creative source within us. And it's more about the things that are around us and being aware to the things that are around us. Not only those things being there, but being able to tune into those things, being consciously aware of things that are going on. How someone walked across the street and a car was coming and they didn't know that right there is an idea in itself. Or how a kid was walking and their ice cream fell on the ground. That right there is an idea, a conversation, a quote in a movie, a quote in a song. These are different things to be aware of, different things to tune into. Now for this painting that I'm planning on doing, and how I plan to continue to use this book is to jump around. I want to jump around to different chapters in this book to learn different things. At the same time, I want to take in what is relating to me in this moment. What am I thinking about in this moment? What's in my mind? What do I want to learn? And I think this book has a lot of that in there. Therefore, I'm going to be jumping around. Different spots, different ideas. My aim for my new paintings is to simply be more aware of the things around me. And I think that's the main point. The main point in this video is to talk about being able to remind myself to take notes of the things that I'm interested in, to take notes of the things that move me emotionally, physically, or spiritually. And I think when we do that more, we're able to come with more ideas. When we sit down to think about what to paint or to sketch, sometimes we come with this blank because we have nothing in the well. We have nothing in the library of ideas to draw from. At the same time, we're not recording those ideas. We're not writing them down. We're not sometimes or sketching them. We're not doing a voice memo. There's nothing really to remind us to look at. Therefore, I encourage you to. I encourage you after this video, next conversation you have, the next movie you watch or the next song that you listen to, if there's something in that thing that moves you, write it down in your phone. Because our phone is always on us and it, our notes is right there. Therefore, it's simple or make a voice note of it. So now you're building up this library of things to draw from. I also made this video so that you can watch me paint this painting as I get ready for this festival. That's something I'm leading up to. I want you to watch on the, the journey. Yeah, you, you get it, you get it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you again next time and keep creating.